Hey everyone, thanks for stopping by my channel. Definitely appreciate you all taking time out of your day to pay me a visit. I'm going to be uh, airbrushing some spinner baits today. Um, just a forewarning for anyone that is considering airbrushing uh, spinner baits. Um, doing a powder paint is going to be a lot faster, at least as I understand powder painting. I've never personally done it. Um, I don't have any powder paints. All I've got is an airbrush and uh, the epoxy. Um, I don't mind putting the time into it, but um, if you're looking for a faster way of making spinner baits, uh, powder paint certainly seems to be the way to go since you don't have to epoxy it. But if you're looking to customize the spinner bait uh, color scheme a little bit more, uh, airbrushing is a very effective way of doing that. I've been doing it for a few years now. Um, I've refined it a little bit. Um, so that's what we're going to be doing today. Um, the way I kind of start my uh, spinnerbait paint project is I, uh, I'll choose a skirt that I want to use. So this is the skirt that I'm going to be using. Uh, it's a white with a gold flake fleck type setup. It's called the Gold Shad. Uh, this is a lure parts online pre-made skirt. Um, I have not gotten into tying my own skirts yet. I absolutely hate the rubber band on pre-made skirts. You know, knowing that it's going to dry out maybe in a year or two and you're going to lose the whole skirt. But they're cheap and effective. And uh, I just haven't gotten into tying my own skirts. But hopefully someday in the future I'll uh, start dabbling in that um, so I can kind of hand tie them. Um, so that's besides the point though. So I take the skirt and uh, kind of look at the color pattern and then kind of decide what I'm going to be doing. So this being predominantly white, um, I'm going to be doing a, uh, a pearl white and uh, using a, a little bit of gold in there uh, and probably some gold, um, gold flakes in the epoxy. So um, first things first, uh, you can already see that I've got four of these set up. I normally do spinner baits in batches of five, um, just because the uh, again these pre-made skirts they come in packs of five, so I want to do all five of them at once so I can knock out that skirt package. Um, but I'm going to show you how I did this um, uh, tape job on these. So. What I'm using is just painter's tape that I have left over from house projects. So I just kind of get it started. And then just line it up with the base of the hook. And all I want to be able to do is cover the hook. So I'll just kind of roll it. And then let's kind of line it up like that, and then tear it. And then just wrap it around the hook. We just don't want to get any overspray on the hooks. So that's the hook. And then the next is going to be this top section. For that, I just kind of eyeball it. You know, you're looking for about maybe one inch. Maybe one and a quarter inches. It really doesn't have to be precise. Um, but for this, I just, again, wrap it close to the head. And then just wrap it around the wire. And then I'll tuck up the excess right there, just like that. Um, this obviously is still exposed, but it's pretty far away, so that you really shouldn't get any overspray onto that. Um, as long as you're using these helping hands. Um, I've only got two of them, so I always set the fifth one just off to the side. So, uh, that, now that we got the tape all done, uh, next thing is to uh, give everything a base coat. So for a base coat, I just use a uh, opaque white. Um, I use the Wicked 
colors uh, by Cretex. Um, I've tried just the normal opaque by Cretex. It doesn't spray all that well without thinning it, but the Wicked colors just spray perfectly. So that's why I've decided to go with that. And uh, as with uh, all of my airbrushing videos, uh, I'm going to be cutting out uh, the heat sets that I do, but every time I do a color, I'll heat set in everything in between. Um, doing a base coat on these uh, unpainted uh, spinner baits, uh, I always do uh, two base coats. So you can kind of see with this one, that that's why I do uh, two base coats. Um, there's some imperfections in the lead most of the time, and it'll take uh, two coats at least to uh, to get it all out. All right, so we got our white base coat. Um, this one's a little being a little difficult. It's got some uh, I don't really know what to call it, but like I guess they're just imperfections from the. Uh, the molding process. Um, I got these from Lure Parts Online. Uh, normally they're really solid um, lures uh, with really no issues, but that one's got a few divots kind of in the head, so it shouldn't really affect things because it's on the collar. It's really the head that only matters on these spinner baits. So, so now that we have the, uh, the white base coat done, um, again, looking at the uh, the, the skirt we're going to be using. Uh, mm, we're going to go with a, uh, a pearl white base. Well, a base on top of the base, I should say. <laughs> so uh, that's going to be the next, uh, next step here. So again, this is uh, just a pearl white by Cretex. And again, uh, since we just cleaned it out, uh, just give it a few test sprays to make sure there's no water kind of in there. One other thing that I periodically will do is look at the nozzle. Um, if anything's like building up at the bottom, that will cause a splatter and I'll just take a rag, um, pull back on the trigger so that you get that needle out of the way and then I'll just cram in a, a rag to clean that up and it should uh, prevent any issues.
All right, so um, I'm going to use a uh, Pearl Satin Gold by Cretex. And uh, just do a little bit of variation to these. Haven't exactly decided how yet, but uh, one thing I've started kind of doing is, so uh, this is just a hair clip. Um, I normally use this for vertical lines on uh, crankbaits, but uh, it works out pretty nicely on these uh, spinner baits when you uh, want to break up the color just a little bit, but you don't want to uh, really have it be too overwhelming. So, all right, we just got a few little vertical lines on that. And then, um, now let's, uh, let's give these a gold back. How about that? So the last little uh, touch up we're going to do here is uh, use a deep red. This is a transparent uh, Cretex. I'm just going to kind of give uh, each one of these variations a red throat. And then for that fifth one, I'm just going to leave it as a pearl white. I'm not going to add any gold to it. All right, so uh, there is our five variations. Uh, so we got the gold stripes with the red throat, and then just normal gold stripes, and then just the pearl white, and then uh, this is a gold back with a red throat, and then we just have a gold back. Uh, next we're gonna do is slap some eyeballs on these guys. Okay, so we're gonna slap some eyeballs on these guys. Uh, I really couldn't decide between kind of your standard uh, pearl or going with the red. Um, I like the red, but I don't think it really fits the color scheme all that well. So I'm going to stick with the pearl white on most of these. I might throw a red onto one of these. We'll, uh, we'll kind of see how I'm feeling once I'm into it. So when attaching eyes, uh, I use a gel super glue. <laughs> And uh, either Gorilla Glue or Loctite, both of those work well. Go ahead and do these two first. And with the super glue, you just want a very, very small amount. And so, how I put eyeballs on, I use two toothpicks. I'll uh, slide the eyeball underneath one of the toothpicks and then just set it in the socket and then use the other toothpick to push, push down on it. 
Just like that. Well, it pays to double check things, especially if it's been a few days since you started this project. Uh, I just put 530 second size eyes on these, and um, they are looking a little small, um, but it's a little too little too late now. Um, I thought the, these were quarter ounce spinner baits, but these are 3 8 so I should have been using a 3 16 size eye rather than uh, the 530 seconds. Not a huge deal, but um, a little bit of a mix-up that uh, I would rather have not done, but <laughs> it's not a complete loss because I still have one more to go, and I'm going to go ahead and use the proper 3 16 ounce size, uh, and I'm going to use red on this one. All right, so there's the proper eye size. You can kind of tell it just stands out a little bit better. So I'm going to go ahead and set this off to the side and uh, get the tape off these and we'll get ready for a clear coat. All right, so we've got our uh, tape removed. We're going to go ahead and get the clear coat started. Uh, for that, I'm using a uh, DevCon 30 minute uh, two ton epoxy. Just brush this stuff right on. I don't uh, really pay too much attention to the thickness or how heavy. I put this on and uh, I'll show you here in a second why I don't really care about that. Okay, so once you've got everything kind of covered, uh, take the heat gun. Put it on the low setting and just run over the epoxy and that's going to thin this out even more or just make it uh, have a lower viscosity. And you'll see if you get it really hot it will start dripping off. <laughs> so uh, you just kind of want to brush it away from the bait. And then uh, you'll just be taking that excessive um, epoxy off. So you don't really need a super thick coat on this. And uh, the, the things that I really make sure that I'm doing here is making sure the barb and the, uh, the skirt collar are not too thick or else that uh, will make those uh, not, not really work all that well. Once you go to put a skirt on, or, uh, you know, plastic. Quick and easy, and then you go pop it on your rotisserie. So if you notice your uh, epoxy started to get really thick, like to the point where it's not even workable, um, what you can do is you can take your heat gun, and just kind of uh, give it a quick heat up. Uh, just like in that last step, it will make it uh, thinned out again and give you a little bit more working time. But you just have to uh, realize the more you do that, the, the less working time you're going to have with it. So it's got diminishing returns. So I really only uh, would recommend doing that if you're you're kind of down to the wire and you only have a little bit left to uh, to paint or uh, epoxy. See that this this stuff just gets really thick really quick again. So again, I'm just going to lather it on there, and then when we take that heat gun to it again, we'll be able to 
move it around easier. Just to show you guys what I mean by throw it on the rotisserie, um, I've got this lure turner that I built, and uh, for this kind of uh, epoxy, you'll want to use something like this. Uh, this was just made out of a microwave motor, a dowel rod, and then some alligator clips. Um, very easy to throw together, but I'll leave this like that for at least 12 hours, but I'll typically let it go for 24 hours. Um, just because uh, this room gets really cold, so it takes a lot longer for these uh, uh, lures to completely harden with that epoxy. All right, so we've got our uh, spinner baits all epoxied. So the next step that we're going to be doing is uh, putting the blades on. Um, so uh, I've got five of these. Um, I'm going to do at least one double Colorado and then a double Colorado and an Indiana. We're gonna mix things up just a little bit here. Um, I never really planned this far ahead. I just kinda do whatever I feel like uh, in the moment. So uh, first thing that we uh, have to do is uh, we're sticking a bead on the uh, spinner bead arm first. Um, and then we're gonna take a number three Colorado blade. And uh, we have a little easy spin uh, clevis. We're gonna put that on there. And then we just thread that on, making sure the cup is facing the right way. And then after that, we're going to add one more bead. Oops. These things are pretty small. Really easy to lose. <laughs> okay. And then once we have that, we're going to get a little spacer. And these spacers I have, uh, I chop them down to about a third of the size. Um, I don't really like having a huge gap between this front blade and the, and the rear blade. So now that I've got that, we're ready to start twisting some metal. So this is kind of where uh, my version 2.0 of spinner baits comes in. So on the uh, the previous spinner baits that I've made, I used to just do the standard, you know, loop. You just take your split ring pliers and make a loop, and then you just kind of like try to get it as closed as possible, right there. I've lost a few uh, swivels and blades that way. I mean, it's not like a huge expensive mistake, but it's just annoying when you're out fishing and you make a cast and. You're reeling in your lure and you feel, ah, something's not right. And you come to realize that your uh, your main blade's gone, uh, gone away. So, um, I have uh, I found this on YouTube. I forget the channel. Um, but uh, he recommended doing it this way to make it kind of lock itself in place. Um, so that you can't lose that swivel unless the swivel actually breaks so uh to do this with spinner bait facing that way i'll take my split ring pliers and um you grab it so that it's very close to the tip there you really just want just a little hair of the wire poking out and you really want to make a very small loop and we're going to be going uh, 90 degrees from the normal way that you're doing that. So again, normally we're going like that. We're going to be going like that. 
And then uh, what I found that helps a lot when you're making these small loops is to support it right at the base of where that bend's going to be with your finger. And just kind of help it along until that's bent just like that. So now you can kind of see we got a loop just like that. And that's going to be what we're using to lock this in place. So um, once I've got that, I'll take... A normal pair of pliers and close that loop just a little bit more you really only want that loop as wide just a little bit wider than the actual width of the uh, the wire and that's that's perfect there so then what you do is you do your normal bend and you kind of want to do that uh, just a little bit under where the gap is if you can kind of see that there and again, I uh, normally support the wire right where the bend is going to be. And then you just bend it downwards. Now as you're bending it, as you get it close to the that loop there, what we have to do is loop this, uh, the first loop that we made around that wire. And uh, sometimes it's easy, sometimes it's not. But generally, once you get it to about that point, hopefully you guys can see that. Once I'm at that point, I uh, abandon the split ring, or not the split ring, but the, uh, the round nose pliers. I grab my normal pliers, and then um, grab it by that first loop, and then just kind of... Push down on the wire with my left hand while uh, kind of pushing over with my pliers and just get it to loop just like that. So you kind of see it looped over on itself like that. And then you just take those pliers and then you just cinch them. And now you've got a really nice small loop. And it's still going to be weedless because this front um, uh, blade's going to still protect it. So now that we got that done, we can go take our swivel and um, find our number five Colorado blade. And then obviously we'll stick the uh, Colorado blade onto the swivel. I find it easier to put the uh, the blade on the swivel first. And uh, for putting the blade on, I don't even use split ring pliers. I just feed it um, right through that and it just goes goes right on and just work it through just slide the split ring just like that now we can go ahead and attach the uh, the split ring from the swivel onto the spinner bait Now to do that, I do use my split ring pliers. Let's get it started, and then just thread it on there. Okay, and there we are. Just need the skirt on. So I'm going to go ahead and, and whip up the other four real quick, and then I'll show you guys the uh, the finished product. Okay, so uh, I've got the blades on for us. I uh, decided to do one double Colorado. 
Um, again, this is a 3-8 uh, spinner bait, so that's a number three Colorado on front and a number five on the on the back. Uh, ended up doing um, kind of an oddball here. You've got number three Willow on the front and a number six Indiana on the back. Um, I'm a really big fan of Indiana blades, um, as well as you know something I didn't mention on this one. We got the brass color rather than just your standard silver. Um, having that, that different kind of flash, I think, is uh, really important. Um, and then uh, this one, we did uh, one silver, number three, and a number five uh, brass color. So uh, another double Colorado. And then a, uh, a double willow blade. We had a number three and a number four. Um, I was debating between a number four and a number five. Uh, I really should be using a number four and a half, but I don't have a number four and a half. Um, four is a little too small and uh, five is too big. So uh, with spinner baits, I'd much rather have a smaller blade so I can uh, work it faster. So that's what I end up doing on that one. And then uh, this one is a uh, number three Colorado and a number five Indiana. So. Last up we got here is to put the uh, the skirts on, and again the skirts is where you know we all started with this. So uh, there is a right way and a wrong way to do these uh, these skirts when they're pre-made like this, um, or at least in my opinion, there's a right way to do it. I, I suppose you could argue doing the opposite of what I'm about to show you, but um, first thing I do is kind of free the skirts up see that you know if they're a little melted together or anything like that they're uh, kind of free up so you want to see which side is longer um, so that rubber band is is kind of like 60% this way 40% over there and um, I always put the longer section on first and we'll kind of show you why here in a second so I I'm not very precise with this. I just kind of jam it right in where I think the middle is. And then as I'm sliding it up, I, I do try to make sure that uh, none of the skirt is going to get in the way. And slide it all the way on the very tip. And there we go. And there is number one done. I think that looks pretty nice. Just a very faint gold on the head there. So I'm going to go ahead and do these uh, next four real quick, and then we'll show you what it all looks like when it's done. All right, so there's our finished products. Uh, we got our double willow, double Colorado, uh, Colorado and willow, or Indiana and willow, I mean. And then a uh, double Colorado. Uh, one thing uh, to point out uh, with these types of skirts, you know, it's got a few strands of this uh, more black gold. Uh, I uh, orientated those all to be on the back. I, I think that's kind of important with this uh, color scheme as well. And then lastly, we've got our uh, uh, was Colorado Indiana blade. So uh, you can kind of see, you know, the red that we did on the collar, you know, it's a little obscured. Um, and that's exactly what I want. You know, when it's in the water, it... The skirt's going to be moving and kind of flashing that red underneath there, and I think that uh, that will definitely help. So um, that's going to do it for the spinner baits. Hopefully, you guys found this uh, helpful. Got a few tips and tricks in there. Uh, thanks everyone for stopping by my channel. Certainly appreciate you all taking time out of your day to pay me a visit, and uh, we will see you all next time.